the nature of fear is that it lasts theoretically a fraction of a second. Fear is momentary. The nature of fear, the purpose of fear is to get our attention and to energize us, okay, so we can deal with the threat, okay. Once you know that the threat is there, okay, if you shift your focus, and that's what happened with the man who, was, who had been in seclusion, my focus on, wasn't on how he could hurt me, my focus was on understanding where he was coming from. So that's the other important thing about fear, it's a response to our perception of the moment, okay. So if what we're perceiving is the thinking about what did happen or could happen, we could keep it going our entire lives. And I've worked with people who've been in that condition. Yes? Energy follows thought. It's one of the things that I believe. Energy follows thought. Yeah. Well, thought stimulates uh, the energy and the reaction, and, can, and it can create it in a lot of ways. Um, it's interesting because uh, the body also affects the thought. So what's happening in our body affects what we're thinking, which leads me to the next question. How did that feeling of fear affect your body? What was the effect on your body when you felt that fear, if you can put that into a few words? Any thoughts on that? First it was a scream. Okay, okay. Ah. And then it was, uh, uh, then I calmed down. Okay, so an initial yes. discharge oh, yeah. of energy. Ah, yeah, okay. It's like, okay, how do we deal with this? Okay, okay. Any other thoughts? You might, not, Pardon? you might not necessarily scream, you might just be nervous all the time. Okay, or so there's and tension like building. Shaking. Yeah, shaking, okay. And shaking happens, I can get my fist to shake just by increasing the tension. Okay, it's an increasing amount of tension. Yes? Fight or flight? Fight or flight. Or yeah, tension. yeah. Okay, and that's, that's really an important piece of it that we're going to get to just on the next part of that. Um, so, so fear gets our attention, okay, and energizes us. If we don't discharge that energy and activity, if we're not running or fighting or freezing, okay, it builds tension. Okay, the problem with building up tension is it draws our mind to the problem, and that's a survival thing, okay. Uh, if I'm actually, uh, I remember a time I was uh, in, in working in a room just off our living room and I just started feeling uncomfortable and I got up and walked out in the living room and my wife had uh, started loading the wood stove and the phone rang and she ran and got the phone and the door was open to the wood stove. And it's like, oh, okay. So I closed the door of the wood stove and it was fine. But I had a sense that there was a danger and I think we all have that sense and animals have that sense, okay, that it gets our attention. I stopped what I was working on, it's like, okay, what's going on? So if I'm building up tension, even because I'm exhausted, I've worked with people who've had problems with panic attacks and the only thing that seemed to be going on is they were totally exhausted, okay? So when we're tired, we push ourselves to keep going and look what's happening to my body, okay? I'm creating tension, I create more energy. So it's like a runner in a track meet who's tired, they start going like this, okay? And raising my shoulders does not help me run, it interferes with it. But that's what you do when you're tired because you're pushing yourself. So that tension draws your mind, okay, to a possible source of that problem, which could be then anything. I could just make up something, um, you know, uh, who knows what. There could be a bomb in here. There could be, you know, I might uh, trip while I'm walking or you, people might start laughing at me. All kinds of things that could make me more afraid, okay, that that stimulates more tension, which draws my mind even more to the source of the problem. Okay, so one thing that fear does is it narrows our focus, pulls us in so that we just focus on the problem. And if the problem isn't right in front of us, sometimes we'll jump all over and our mind goes from problem to problem and we're just building up tension all the time. Okay. And we're expecting or dreading the next. Yeah, and then we react and it's become... And we see everything that comes at us in that way. Yeah, we interpret it in that way because of that narrow focus and that's an important component of, of, of fear-based thinking. Okay, so it gets our attention, but it really only lasts a second. As long as you focus on it, when you shift the focus, it changes. So an example of another emotion, um, I went to, to two funerals this past week and, uh, you know, walked in feeling sad. They had lost someone that was important to me and uh, kind of alone. And then people started telling stories and there was laughter and a sense of community and hugs. And so there was a range of emotions depending on where the focus was, 
Okay, when the focus shifts, the emotion shifts. Okay, so emotion is a response to the moment. It's an overall read on the moment. So there's three kinds of fear. Okay, there's the natural fear that we've been talking about. That's, that's a response to a direct threat, and that can last seconds. Okay, structural fear is what happens when the buildup of tension is either really um, high all at once because of trauma, or gradually builds over time, like it can through exhaustion. Okay, so it's a buildup of tension in your body that continually draws your mind to what might be wrong. Okay, so it can come from experience of trauma, or it can just come from a buildup of stress, or it can come from blocking emotions because emotions are actually physical events. They happen in the body. There's actually movement in the muscles when you experience an emotion. And the way to block an emotion is to tense the muscle. So if I want to stop crying, it works. I'll stop crying. But now I've got all this tension, okay, which is going to pull my mind and set off the whole, the whole process. The third type of fear is the one we're really concerned about today, and that's mental fear. That's fear that comes from thought has the same physiological and psychological response as natural fear, as actually being in front of a direct threat, okay, but we don't have the outlet. So, and it doesn't, it lasts as long as we keep thinking about it.